Okay, question we get fairly regularly is cleaning. How do we clean a Wonder Bar gun? Now, we've got a fairly disgusting gun sent to us by one of our customers for a quick clean down. It is leaking from several spots inside here, which we replace several O-rings, but haven't actually cleaned the gun itself down yet. So, what's the best way to clean it? What we recommend is lukewarm soapy water when it gets to this stage. Um, for your general clean down, which should happen, well, ideally daily, but uh, most venues do it weekly, simply remove the cap, give all inside here a nice wash down with possibly a toothbrush, give it a quick scrub, give it a clean down, clean down inside the nozzle, and soak the entire gun overnight in soda water. That is your standard weekly, if not daily, clean. But occasionally, it needs a bit more of a heavy duty clean, which is where we recommend the warm water, warm soapy water. Never use hot water. These guns are under quite a bit of pressure, and if they're placed in hot water, the O-rings expand and the gun can literally explode. Um, basically, all the O-rings can pop and you've got water and syrup going everywhere. Not a pretty sight. Do not use heat on them. So. We've got a bucket of warm soapy water, we're going to throw it in, give it a few minutes just to soak, and we'll give it a scrub with a toothbrush, and we'll see how she comes out. Alright, we gave the whole thing a quick scrub, and as we can see, it came up much nicer and shinier. The whole thing came up to a decent condition. Now, that is the basic clean down, but sometimes you need more. Occasionally, you find the buttons, when you push them down, they stick down. Sometimes they don't pop up as fast, and they're just not as responsive as it should be. So, what do you do about that? That's the next step. Probably about once a year, I'd recommend doing this if you, tech, if you own your own system. Otherwise, have Coke or Pepsi do it if <laughs> it's their system. Well, what you're paying for a box, you might as well get your money's worth out of them. So, simply remove the two screws from the button plate and remove the button plate. Under that, you'll find a couple of stainless steel plates. One thing, don't take that one off. If it's a Mark IV like this one, not so bad. But the old Mark IIs and the 2.5s, yeah, trust me, as a DIY, you'll never get the damn thing back on. The new ones have lock plates, which make them easy to change and fix. But yeah, the older models, they're an absolute nightmare. But occasionally under here needs to be cleaned down. Once again, take all this out and give everything a scrub down with just the warm soapy water. Let's do that. All right, we took the whole thing apart. We gave it a good scrub down just with the soapy water and the toothbrush. And we're putting it back together again. Now. When you put these ones back together again, just lightly do them up so they hold the plates in place. If you tighten them up too much, they can actually hold the plates down, which will cause, if the top ones are doing it, soda water to run continuously, and if the bottom ones are on too tight, plain water to run continuously. So just tighten them up so they're just in the place. Try them all, make sure they spring back. When you try them all, do it over a sink, otherwise you will get water and soda water going everywhere. Then, after having scrubbed Especially the back of these button plates, they get pretty bad. This ones weren't so bad. My boys gave all the insides a quick clean when they changed out a few of the O-rings earlier. It was only the outside they left for me to do the video. And once again, put the Phillips heads back in and tighten them up. Once again, not too tight. If you over tighten them, these things are built with such little tolerance that simply by over tightening them you can actually hold the buttons the button plates down rather than just in place and look if stuff starts to come out simply back the screws off a bit you've gone too far but that's all there is to it <laughs>